Hello again, dear students. So in the last video, um, we said that food diets are the food um, consumed by animals during a certain period of time. We said that animals have or are classified into carnivores, herbivores, and omnivores according to what they eat, okay? And in order to get the food they need, Animals follow feeding behaviors, and these feeding behaviors differ and are different from one animal to another, right? Some animals, or let me say carnivorous animals, catch their prey. They are predators, so they catch their prey, while herbivorous animals, like the rabbit, for example, they harvest their food. They just find it and pick it up. Okay, they don't need to hunt or to catch. So carnivorous animals, what do they do? They catch or they capture. You can add this as a note on your copybook. Why herbivorous animals, they harvest their food. Okay, so, so you do not forget carnivore, catch and capture. Why? Herbivores harvest. Okay? In this chapter, in activity three, and now I need you to open a new page on your copybook, add the title. In this uh, activity, we'll be answering this question. How do animals recognize and find their food? How do they know that this is the food I need? Animals recognize their suitable food using their senses, okay? By special organs called sensory organs. So let's study how some animals recognize their food. In part A, they're asking us to indicate the posed problem. The posed problem is a question. What is this text? trying to answer which question, right? How some animals recognize their food. So on your copybook, please. Right, introduction. Don't use your book, don't write on your book. Part A, what is the posed problem? How some animals recognize their food. And for sure, we do not forget the question mark as the answer will be considered incorrect if you do, okay? So this is the first the problem. Part B, fill, in the fill the following figure by the five senses we have. We have five different senses, A, B, C, D, E, okay? So what's A, which sense is this? Right? It's hearing sense, hearing. So right, A next to it, hearing. B, tasting, tasting sense. C, seeing sense or sight sense. D, smelling sense and e touching so the five senses our five senses are hearing tasting sight smelling and touching now what are the sensory organs that allows the function of each of these senses part c now a, we're talking about hearing. What do we use to hear? It's for sure the ears. B, what about tasting? Tongue, yes. C, seeing, sight, eyes, you're right. D, smelling, nose. Okay, and E, touching, we use our skin. 
not only the hand, it's the skin, the whole skin. The skin is the largest organ of the body, okay? So right here, those are the senses. We have five senses, hearing, tasting, seeing, smelling, and touching. While we have five sens um, sensory organs, okay? We should never confuse senses with sensory organs. When I ask you about senses, there are five senses, as I said, hearing, tasting, seeing, smelling, and touching. When I ask you about sensory organs, you have to tell the organ that enables a sense. So whether it is the ears, uh, the nose, the tongue, the skin, or the eyes, okay? So this is the introduction now. We solved the introduction and it's the three parts, A, B, C, okay? You'll need to write the answers on your copybook. And as I told you, this is a new activity. So on a new page. In document one, we'll be seeing different animals and finding out the senses and the sense organs they use to, they use to recognize their food. Okay, I start with figure one showing a falcon. Falcon spots its prey from very high altitudes, then start a fast flight to capture it. The prey could be a fish, a snake, or a rat. First, falcon spots its prey, starts a fast flight, capture it. These are the three steps of a falcon's feeding behavior, right? The falcon is a predator. It is an animal that hunts another animal for food, okay? It hunts a prey. The prey is the animal killed and eaten by a predator. I need you to think with me now. What is the sense that a falcon uses to recognize its food? Look at the verb spots. The falcon spots using its eyes. So eyes are the organ, the sensory organs that the falcon uses. So what's the sense? It's the sight. Okay. What about bats now? So on your copy books, you write the you write document one, page eighteen. Okay, and then we have part A, figure one, sense and sense organs. Let's move to figure two. We're talking about a bat, about bats. Bat emits ultrasound waves, which when hitting the prey get reflected back to the bat in order to, lo to locate its prey. Okay, so ultrasound, sound. And here we're talking about predator and prey. This is a carnivorous animal, okay? Since we're talking about sounds, so what is the organ used by the bat to recognize its prey, to find its prey? The ears, right? The sense is then hearing. Figure three, we're talking about ants. An ant, an ant, so figure three now. An ant recognizes its food by touching and smelling it through its long antenna. So ants have two antennae on their heads and they use them for touching and smelling. Right here, what is the organ used? What do they use? through their long antenna. So here, the organs are the antennae. This is the plural of the word antenna, okay? What do they use their antennae for? They use them for touching and smelling, okay? So insects use their two antennae for touching and for smelling. Let's move to the last figure, figure four. It talks about dogs. I kid you know that. Dogs smells the scent of its 
of their prey in order to track them, even if the prey went far away. Okay, smelling right here is the sense, right? So smelling is the sense. And to smell, dogs use their nose. You see how different animals use different sensory organs and different senses to recognize, to know where their food are. Okay, so different animals use different senses to recognize their food and different um, sensory organs allow these senses. Okay, now let's move to document two, choosing its food. Grasshopper is an insect that feeds on grass. In this lesson, we're wondering, wondering how the grasshopper can recognize its food. For this reason, two different experiments are conducted. Pick out the posed problem. What is the posed problem? We said that a posed problem has the form of a question. What is the question in here? how the grasshopper can recognize its food. So on your copybook, you write document two, page 19 and part A. Suppose the problem is how the grasshopper can they recognize its food and do not ever forget the question mark as the answer will be considered incorrect if you do so, okay? In your opinion, how do grasshoppers recognize their food? Let's make three hypotheses concerning the sense used. What can be the sense used by the grasshopper to recognize its food? And remember, these are hypotheses. They might be correct, or no, it's okay. I will write the first one. And remember here, he is asking us, the question is asking us to choose senses and not sensory organs, okay? So hypothesis one, we should never forget the word hypothesis. Hypothesis one, I will say, um, the grasshopper uses its sight sense to recognize its food. Okay, maybe, who knows? Okay, another hypothesis, um, let's say smelling. Okay, maybe, maybe the grasshopper uses its smelling sense to recognize its food, right? It's smelling sense to recognize its food, okay? The third one, what do you want to put? Touching, um, hearing, let's see. The grasshopper, you can choose the sense you want, by the way, the senses you want. The grasshopper uses its um, hearing sense to recognize its food. Okay, two different experiments are conducted to see which of these hypotheses is correct. In the first one, we said that it's the sight, sight sense that helps a grasshopper recognize its food. And the second one, smelling, and the third one, hearing. Okay, let's move to the experiments now. And you need to copy these answers on your copybook. A. The pose the problem, don't forget for sure the question mark. B, the hypothesis. Before writing our hypothesis, we should mention that this is a hypothesis or else the question or the answer is incorrect. First experiment, we place four grasshoppers in the middle between two empty sacks with different colors, okay? And then we waited one minute to see where grasshoppers will be attracted. Pick out question number one. This is part C, I. Pick out, this means that the answer is in front of our eyes. All we need to do is to pick it out. What's, what's the variable factor? 
What did we change in here? What's different? Here we have an empty green sack, and here we have an empty yellow sack. So the difference in here is that the colors of the sacks, right? So this is the variable factor. A variable factor is what we change in an experiment. So it's the color of the sack. One is green, the second one is yellow. Pick out the results obtained. What did we obtain as a result? What happened after one minute? The grasshoppers, all the four grasshoppers, one, two, three, four, they are where now? They are attracted to the green sack, right? None of them went to the yellow, yellow sack. So the results obtained is that all grasshoppers are attracted to the green sack only, right? This is what we obtained as a, as a result. Analyze the given experiment, okay? Analyze. To analyze, what do we do? We read the procedure of the experiment and also the, okay, and also the results we got, okay? We should never miss the procedure done, the experiment done, the results, okay? And the most important thing is the variable factor. Do not forget what we changed in an experiment. So how do we analyze? You can start by the results or with the procedure. Yani you can say that after putting grasshoppers between two empty sacks, one is green, one is yellow, grasshoppers get attracted or are attracted to the green empty sack after one minute. You see how I just read what happened, what we did, and the results. That's it. But we should, we should miss nothing, OK? Or you can start with the results. After one minute, um, or grasshoppers are attracted to the green empty sack. After one minute of placing them between a green empty sack and a yellow empty sack, OK? You can, you can write this the way you want, but on, um, you have to respect, respect the conditions. How, how do we analyze? We should say what we did in an experiment and also the results, okay? I will say after one minute of placing four grass hoppers between two empty sacks, one is green and the other is yellow. Grass hoppers are attracted to the green empty sack. Okay. The timing of the experiment the procedure, so what did we do? We placed them between two empty sacks, green and yellow. This is the variable factor, and it is very, very important to analyze, and then the result, okay? Tayyip, we placed grasshoppers between two empty sacks. The sacks are empty. However, grasshoppers moved to the green one. So which sense did grasshopper rely on to move toward the green sack. Which sense did they use? They used the sight sense, right? The color, they recognized the color. So we conclude, this is a conclusion. So we should say, we conclude that grasshoppers used their seeing sense or sight sense to recognize to recognize their food. Okay. I will stop for tea. So they use their sight sense to recognize their food for sure. Okay. Draw out the validated hypothesis. Which hypothesis is the correct one? 
which one proved to be validated? It's the first one, right? We said here, site sense. So I will write hypothesis one, because it was the first one and I wrote. And my hypothesis, my first hypothesis, hypothesis was and the grasshopper uses its sight sense to recognize its food. Okay, so we solved part C, D, E, and F. This is the first experiment. And the first experiment showed in the grasshoppers, they use their sight sense to recognize their food. They rely on colors of things. Now the second experiment, we place four grasshoppers again in the middle between two yellow sacks so now the sacks have the same color but with different content they contain different things okay this one contains grass and this one contains sand and then we waited one minute to observe where grasshoppers will be attracted okay the variable factor now what did we change did we change the color of the sack of the sack no, because both the sacks are yellow, we changed the content. So what's different now is the content of the sack. The result obtained, as you can see, four grasshoppers move toward the sack containing grass. So the result obtained, the grasshoppers are attracted to the sack containing, containing, grass okay this is part g um double i analyze again to analyze you can try it by yourself you can pause now the video and try to analyze by yourself you need to say what we did and what were the results so after placing grasshoppers between Two yellow sacks, one containing grass and one containing sand. Grasshoppers get oh, are attracted attracted to the sack containing grass after one minute. Okay, so I'll write the answer. Upon placing four grasshoppers between a yellow sack <clears throat> containing grass and a yellow sack containing sand, grasshoppers are attracted to the yellow sack containing grass after one minute and we should never 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 forget the variable factor in analyzing okay so one sack containing grass one sack containing sand okay now grasshoppers are seeing two yellow yellow sacks okay so they're not, they are not using their um, site anymore because both sacks are yellow, okay? What sense did grasshoppers rely on to find out the grass? What did they use? Did they, masalan, hear the grass talking? Did they smell it? What? Okay, it's smelling. Okay, because they didn't touch it, they didn't touch the sacks, they didn't hear the sacks, they didn't taste them, but they smelled them. So here we conclude that, since this is a conclusion, Miss, we conclude that grasshoppers, grasshoppers use their smelling sense. Okay. They use their smelling sense. So which hypothesis is this? In which hypothesis we said that maybe grasshoppers use their smelling sense in hypothesis two? So you know now that grasshoppers are animals that use their 
smelling sense, come in, their seeing sense, their sight sense to recognize their food. Okay? In document F, we're almost done, okay? In document F, a grasshopper, they, they are telling us a grasshopper spots and chooses its food by antennae, okay? These antennae perceive odors, so smelling, right? Antennae for smelling. Eyes are sensitive to colors, so eyes to see colors, okay? And by palps, that surround the mouth for tasting. All we need to do is to fill in the table uh, on our copy books, okay? On the copy books, so document F, you draw the table using a pencil, a kid. Uh, grasshoppers, they have antennae, two antennae on the top of their head to do what? To perceive odors. So what's the sense? Smelling. Organ two, their eyes to do what? For sight or for seeing, yes. And their palps around their mouth for tasting. So we based our answer on the giving, on the given, okay? If we want to give a title for this table, so this is a table showing uh, the sense organs and the senses used by, used by grasshoppers to recognize their food. Deal? Okay. Um, you'll have a small, a short homework to do, okay? Um, see you inshallah in class or in our next video. Take good care.